The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Parquet Margarine. Millions of women all over America serve Parquet because it tastes so good. Why, Parquet tastes like it should cost twice as much. To market, to market, to get some Parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You'll like it, you'll love it, like millions who say their favorite margarine is. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. It's one of those gray, chill December days in Summerfield. The kind of a day when it's nice to stay in and bask in the warmth and comfort of home. And that's where we find the great Gildersleeve this Saturday morning contentedly toasting himself before a warm fire in the living room. Well, guess I'm about done on this side. <laughs> I'll turn around. <sighs> this is nice. Wish I didn't have to go to work this morning. Why did I have to be a water commissioner? Just a slave to the public. Oh, you still here, Mr. Gilsleeve? Yes, Bertie. Aren't you going to work this morning? Yes, I'm going. I don't have to be there at the crack of dawn, you know. No, sir. Did you know it's 10 o'clock, Mr. Gilsleeve? Yes, Bertie. I can see the clock. Yes, sir. 10 o'clock's pretty late to be going to work. <laughs> Bertie, you just run the house and let the commissioner run the water department. Okay, commissioner. But this house would sure be a mess if I didn't start to work till 10 o'clock. <laughs> I <laughs> uh, guess I should get started Well, a few more minutes won't hurt Oh, hello, Anki Oh, hello, Marjorie oh, uh, Who's your little friend crawling on the floor there? Hello, baby <laughs> uh, You certainly get around these days uh, Where do you think you're going? I'd better put her on the couch Yeah, good idea, I'll do it uh, Come on, baby Oh, my, you're getting heavy <laughs> There. Sit still now. <laughs> Uncle Mort, aren't you going to work this morning? Work? Of course I am. Well, aren't you going pretty soon? It's 10 o'clock and you only work half a day on Saturday. I know that. Why is everybody trying to push me out of my own house? Of course I'm not entitled to any rest. I'm just the man who pays the bills around here, that's all. Oh, Anki. Well? Uh, can I see the paper a minute? Yeah, certainly, my dear. I want to look at the ads. You know, it's time to start thinking about Christmas shopping. Uh, yeah. Hi, Uncle. Good morning, Leroy. Hey, aren't you going to work this morning? No, Leroy. I've quit my job. We're going to live on my pension from the Spanish-American War. <laughs> what? Oh, are you kidding? <laughs> uh. Uncle, can I have twelve dollars and seventy-five cents? What? I just figured out my Christmas list, and that's what I need to buy presents. Twelve seventy-five. Is that so? Yep. I'm not going to wait like I did last year. I'm going to do my Christmas shopping early. Yeah, that's fine. So if you'll just give me the money. <laughs> just a minute, young man. Has it ever occurred to you that you might try to earn a little money yourself? Huh? You heard me. You don't have to run to me for every penny. Wouldn't hurt you to go to work. Go to work? A little kid like me? <laughs> <laughs> Leroy, I'm not sending you to the coal mines, you know. I'm just talking about a part-time job. Oh. That's the only way you'll learn the value of money, my boy. It'll build your character. Why, George, I worked when I was your age. You want to grow up to be like me, don't you? Leroy? Oh, sure. All right, then. It'll be good for you. Lots of boys work after school. Of course. Francie's brother does. Francie's brother does. No, no. What do you say, Leroy? Well... You don't have to work forever. Just earn your Christmas money. Working will be a lot of fun. The feeling of independence, the pride of accomplishment. Gee, I don't know where to look. Well? Here's the paper. You can look in the want ad. Great idea, my dear. Arch, why don't you mind your own business? I don't have to. No, infants. Let's see here. Personals. 
Lost and found. Here we are. Help wanted. Accountant? Bartender? No. no. <laughs> oh, yeah, this sounds just like the thing. Boy wanted to deliver telegrams part-time. Must have bicycle. See Mr. Marshall immediately. Summerfield Telegraph Office. That's just the job for you, Leroy. Good, healthy outdoor work. And you love to ride a bicycle. Gee, I don't know, Uncle. Well, Leroy, it's up to you. I'm not going to force this on you. Just thought you'd like to assume a little responsibility. Earn some money of your own. But if you want to take a job, you don't have to. All right, I won't. You will, too. <laughs> Come on, young man. I'm going to deliver you to the telegraph company. <laughs> Here we are, Leroy. Yeah. There's the telegraph office. All the bicycles out in front. See it? Yeah. Well, what are you waiting for? Oh, can't you come in with me? Leroy, don't be a fraidy cat. Just walk in the door like a little man and ask for Mr. Marshall. Maybe he already hired somebody. Now, we don't know that, so go on now. He won't bite you. Okay. That's a boy. Good luck, Leroy. My goodness, walk faster than that, Leroy. They don't hire snails to deliver telegrams, you know. Okay. Well, uh, can't blame him for being nervous. Just a kid. There he goes in the door. Little Leroy. Little Leroy going to work. Well, every little bird has to leave the nest someday. And you can't tell. A lot of great men started as messenger boys. But if he works hard, minds his P's and Q's... Someday, Leroy might be president of the telegraph company. Think of that. We'll be able to send all our telegrams free. <laughs> oh, here he comes. He's running. Must have good news. Yes, sir, here comes the future president. Well, Leroy, did Mr. Marshall give you the job? No, nope, I didn't ask him. What? When I got in there, I was too scared. Oh, my goodness. Oh, gee, Uncle, he made me nervous. I got all tongue-tied. Didn't you say anything to him? Yeah, I asked him what time it was. What? <laughs> Gee, God, what's the matter with you, Leroy? Well, you're not going to get out of it this easy, young man. If you won't go in and ask for that job, I'll go in and get it for you. Will that be all right? Sure. Well, that's fine. You wait here, Leroy. Okay. I don't know what kids are coming to, afraid to ask for a job. Well, I'll help them out this time. Show them how to handle a situation like this. Uh, <clears throat> here goes. That's Mr. Marshall behind the counter there. Hmm. No wonder Leroy was scared. Old, bushy eyebrows. Uh, Mr. Marshall? Yes? Uh, good morning. Good morning. Would you like to send a wire? Huh? Just write your message on the blank there, and please print plainly. Uh, but, Mr. Marshall, I didn't come here to send a telegram. What? I want to talk to you about a job. Job? Yes, you advertise in the paper for a messenger boy. <laughs> no. Now, you see, I... Uh... Uh, you're a little old for a messenger boy, aren't you? I know that. Uh, we did hire some old fellows during the war, but they didn't work out very well. What? Now, look here. Uh, some of them had rheumatism so bad they could hardly ride a bicycle. But for your information, I don't have rheumatism. Well, maybe not, but anyway, you're too fat. Oh! We don't have a uniform big enough to fit you. I only wear a 44. <laughs> now, see here, if you. If I were you, I'd try some other line of work. Tubby? Oh, Goodbye. Tubby. If I didn't have my overcoat on, I'd have punched him right in the nose. Wouldn't have Leroy working for a man like that if he well, never... Well, Huh? Did you get me the job? Well, no. I changed my mind, Leroy. Huh? I don't think that's the right job for you. Oh, boy, then I don't have to go to work, huh? I didn't say that, Leroy. There were a lot of other jobs advertised in the paper. Oh. The nerve of that fella calling me Tubby. What'd you say, Uncle? Yeah, there's nothing, Leroy. Hand me the want ads. <laughs> Leroy's making out. Should be an easy job for him, wrapping packages. Been there quite a while now. Maybe he's... Oh, there he comes. Did you get the job, Leroy? No. Well, what happened? Well, he wanted to try me out, so he had me tie a package. Then what'd he say? Get out. Yeah. 
Well, let's try another place. Well, did you get this job, Leroy? No, he said I was too small. Did you get this job, Leroy? No, he said I was too big. Did you get this job, Leroy? No, he said I was... I know, never mind, I'll take you home. Peavy. Oh, hello, mister. The only three? <laughs> what can I do for you? Well, you can give me a hot cup of coffee. I've been driving around in the cold all morning. Very well. It is a little nippy out today. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, there you are. Thanks. Yeah, thought it wouldn't hurt Leroy to earn a little Christmas money, so I've been out with him trying to find him a job. Oh, I see. Yeah. Funny he couldn't get one. You'd think anybody would jump at a chance to hire a boy like Leroy. Don't you think so, Peavy? You care for some cream, Mr. Gildersleeve? <laughs> huh? Uh, thanks. Say, Peavy, I just thought of something. Yes? Leroy worked for you last year, didn't he? Well, he was down here. <laughs> yes, sir, by George, and if he worked for you last year, uh, there's no reason... Have a donut, Mr. Gildersleeve. Peavy... They're very good with coffee. Peavy, I'm trying to talk to you. Mm, all right, go ahead. Ugh. The Christmas rush is just starting, and you're going to be pretty busy around this drugstore. Well, I hope so. And you certainly could use some help around here the next few weeks, couldn't you? Yes, I believe I could. And a schoolboy would be just the thing. Young, active. Yes, sounds like the type, all right. Well, what about Leroy? Hmm, what about him? <laughs> He's looking for a job. Yes, I hope he finds one. Oh, <laughs> Peavy, what's the matter with you? Leroy is just what you need around this drugstore. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. Oh, <laughs> oh come on now. You tell him, <laughs> No, you tell him, Mr. Wall. Oh, go ahead, Bertie. But, Mr. Wall... Oh, come on, Bertie. You tell him. But, Mr. Wall, you ought to tell him. That part about parquet's nutrition, that's your specialty. Well, those nourishing qualities in parquet, margarine, are pretty important, you know, Bertie. Sure, Mr. Wall, sure. Parquet's just busted with units and essentials. You mean that it contains 15,000 units of essential vitamin A? <laughs> I knew you'd say it much better, Mr. Wall. That's your specialty. And, friends, nourishing as it is... Parquet costs only about half as much as the most expensive spreads. Now, that's something when you consider that parquet is prepared like a rare luxury food from the selected products of American farms. But you know, the really important thing is the delicious parquet flavor. And the real important part, <laughs> that's my specialty. Parquet's got a light, delicate taste. Tastes so good. That's what you mean. Tastes like it should cost twice as much. Hot bread, waffles, toast, biscuits, pancakes. Mm -mm. Parquet tastes scrumptious on all of them. Friends, why not try Parquet Margarine this week? That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. That delicate Parquet flavor will be your specialty once you try Parquet. Once you find out, it tastes like it should cost twice as much. Well, the great Gildersleeve was so busy this morning trying to find a job for Leroy that he never got to work himself. It's lunchtime now, and we find the great man, cold and disgruntled, clumping up the front walk. Uh, looks like Leroy will never get a job. Guess I'll just give him the 1275 and forget about it. <clears throat> Getting colder. I'll be glad to get in the house. Hi, Uncle. Oh, hello, Leroy. Be right there, Leroy. Wait till I take off my overcoat. Ugh. Huh? You eating already? Yeah. Say, Leroy, I... I think we'll just forget about you working. I'll just give you the money. I don't need 
did, Unc. What? I got a job. You did? Where? Selling papers for the Summerfield Indicator. Well, little Leroy got a job. I'm proud of you, my boy. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I'm glad you didn't give up. How'd you get the job? Just go in and ask for it like a little man? Well, no. Piggy got sick and he asked me to take his place. Oh. Well, anyway, you got a job. When do you start? Right away, Unc. I'm going right down and pick up my papers. I got the corner at 8th and Main. 8th and Main? Well, that's fine. Choice location. Oh, uh, hello, Uncle Mort. Is lunch ready? Yeah, just about, I guess. Leroy's eating early. He has a job, you know. Yes, I know. And I don't think you ought to let him go. What? I think it's too cold for him to stand on that corner all day. Well, uh, uh, do you think so, Leroy? No, I'll be okay. It's going to be awfully windy down there. Who cares about a little wind? I'm no sissy. Well, all right, my boy. Want me to drive you down? I'm going to Floyd's for a haircut pretty soon. No, thanks, Uncle. I'll ride my bike. <laughs> Leroy, a little working man. Oh, hello, Mr. Gilsley. Hello, Bertie. Here's your pie, Leroy. Thanks. I'll leave it on the way. I've got to get to work. That's right. Uh, <laughs> Leroy's a little working man now. Uh, yes, sir. Leroy, you bundle up good now if you're going to stand on that cold corner all day. I will. And don't forget your muffler. I won't. Well, here I go. X Street, X Street, read all about it. Oh, dear. <laughs> Uh, Leroy, maybe you better save your voice till you get down there. Okay. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Goodbye, my boy, and good luck. Hey, <laughs> There he goes. I'm glad he's down on Ethan Main, though. <laughs> uh, a little breadwinner. He's all right, that boy. Yes, sir. I hope he stays that way. What? This ain't no day for a little boy to be standing out on a cold corner. Now, Bertie, he'll be all right. No, sir, freezing out there on that corner just to make a few pennies. Bertie, it's not the money, it's the principle of the thing. Principle of the thing ain't gonna stop him from catching pneumonia, and that's what he's gonna get standing on that cold corner. It is awfully cold today, Unky. Now, Marjorie. I can just see him shivering there on that cold corner. Now, Bertie. And it looks like it's going to snow. Poor little fella standing on that corner covered with snow. <laughs> Now, oh, Bertie, it isn't snowing and Leroy is going to be all right. Let's forget about the whole thing. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Now, what am I going to have for lunch? Mr. Gillsleeve, you're going to have hot soup, hot meat, hot gravy, and hot cornbread. And while you're eating it, Leroy's going to be standing down there on that cold corner. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This is one of my bad days. Hello, Floyd. Well, if it isn't our esteemed water commissioner. And look who's in the barber chair, the Honorable Judge Hooker. What are you doing, getting your whiskers trimmed, you old goat? <laughs> that was supposed to be a humorous remark, Floyd. Just take off your overcoat, Commissioner. You're next. Yeah, thanks. Kind of cold out today, huh? I don't know. I don't feel it. You know what they say, where there's no sense, there's no feeling. <laughs> Yes, I suppose that was a humorous remark. Well, there you are, Judge. That ought to hold you till next time. Thank you, Floyd. There you are. Thanks, Judge. All right, Commish. Come on, get out of the way, Judge. <sighs> well, Gildy, I suppose you're getting all pretty up to see your intended Miss Fairchild. Well, I am going to see her after a while. Be sure to give her my best. And say hello to your family. I suppose they're all home around the fireside on a day like this. Well, all but Leroy. He's working today. Working? Yes. Just got a part-time job to earn a little Christmas money. He's selling papers at 8th and Main. He's down on that corner on a cold day like this? Now, Judge, don't you start that. A little cold isn't going to hurt anybody. Well, it seems to me, Gildy, a boy of his age... It seems to me, Gildy... Just keep your two cents out of this, Hooker. I know what's best for my family. Ah, oh, fellas. Well, well, I was only making a comment. The trouble with you is, Judge, you comment too much, you old windbag. What? Who are you calling a windbag, you fathead? Oh, fellas, gee whiz. I'm Leroy's uncle, Judge, and when I want any advice from a shyster lawyer like you, I'll ask for it. Shyster? Well, look here, Gildy. Oh, go chase an ambulance. Yeah. <laughs> good day. Uh, good day. I sure told off that old Budinsky, didn't I, Floyd? Huh? I don't know what everybody's worrying about. Leroy will be all right. Don't you think so, Floyd? Well, like you say, you're the kid's uncle. It's up to you. But, Floyd... If you want to let Leroy freeze out there, it's none of my business. <laughs> He's not... I guess the... the kid's health don't matter as long as he makes a few measly bucks. What? 
Now, Floyd, do you think I'd do anything like that? Well, if the pants fit, put them on. I wouldn't do anything to hurt Leroy. You know that. Ha. Honest, Floyd, I, I didn't think it would hurt him. No, I suppose it's good for the kid, shivering on some corner, standing in the snow. Snow? Take a look out the window there. What do you think that white stuff coming down is? Goose feathers? Oh, my goodness. It is snowing. Let me out of here, Floyd. I'll get my coat. See you later. Ooh, it is cold. Look at that snow. Glad I wore this heavy coat. Poor little Leroy, standing on that corner. I better get down there right away. It's all my fault. I let him go. He's probably frozen blue by now. Leroy, I'm coming, my boy. There's a corner. I wonder if he's... He isn't here. That's funny. He said eighth in Maine. He might have... No, his papers are here on the stand. What's that sign say? Back soon. Please put money for papers and tin can. Leroy printed that sign all right. Nobody else would spell please with a Z. <laughs> uh, probably went someplace to get warm. Uh, poor little fellow. I'll just wait here for him. Better straighten out his papers. I'm getting a little wind blown. Boy, give me a paper, please. Huh? I want to buy a paper. But, madam. Never mind, Slowpoke. I'll help myself. Yeah. Here's your nickel. Yep. Slowest news, boy, I ever saw. Oh, my goodness. She thinks I'm. Well, anyway, I made a sale for Leroy. <laughs> Wish you'd hurry back. Hello there. What? Remember me? I'm Mr. Marshall from the Telegraph Company. Oh, yeah. Well, I see you finally got a job. Yep. <laughs> Mr. Marshall, I'm not... Oh, re don't apologize. There's nothing wrong with selling papers. It's good, honest toil. Yes, I know. Many of our great men got started that way. Mr. Marshall, I... Anyway, this is better work for you than being a messenger boy. Here's a dime for good luck. Ah, now, look here. Ah, oh, that's all right. Glad to help you, Tubby. Oh, goodbye. Oh, this is getting ridiculous. I wonder where Leroy is. I'd like to get in a warm place myself. When he gets back here, I'm going to take him home. I wonder how much he's made today. I can get my hand in this little can. Pretty tight squeeze. Uh, just a minute there, Fred. What? Oh, hello, officer. <laughs> what are you taking that money out of there for? Well, um, I was just going to count it. Yeah? You see, it belongs to my little nephew. Tell that to your Aunt Minnie. Who? Get your fist out of that can. What? Oh, oh, sure. <laughs> well, hurry up. You know, I'm trying to. It's a little tight. <laughs> there. Aren't you ashamed of yourself, stealing pennies from a newsboy? Now, just a minute, officer. With Christmas coming, too? Oh, that's pretty low. I ought to run you in. Now, just a minute. I'm Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. So what? I happen to be water commissioner of this town. Sure, and I'm the governor of Idaho. <laughs> you must be new on the force, so you'd know that. Why, every policeman in town knows me. I'll bet they do. Oop. <laughs> I tell you that I... Well, here comes a friend of mine. He'll identify me. Oh, Judge. Judge Hooker. Well, what's going on here? Oh, thank goodness you've come along, Horace. I was waiting here for Leroy, and this policeman tried to accuse me of taking his paper money. He did? Yes, isn't that silly? <laughs> he refuses to believe I'm water commissioner. Is that so? So, Horace, old friend, if you'll just tell this greenhorn flatfoot who I am. Oh, do, do you know this man, sir? I never saw him before in my life. What? <laughs> judge! I'm not a judge. I'm just a shyster lawyer. Oh, I was only kidding, Horace. Judge, where are you going? Sorry, I must be off. I've got to go chase an ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> so I'm a greenhorn flatfoot, eh? You are? Did I say that? I think I will run you in stealing pennies from her. No, just a minute, flatfoot. I mean, officer. <laughs> Why would I take a few pennies? I've got money. See? There's a $5 bill. Well, it... I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give it to the newsboy. I'll put it in a little can here. There. How's that? Five dollars. Well, okay, I'll let you off this time, but get moving. But I'd like to wait here for my... Beat it! What a commissioner. <laughs> oh, my goodness. 
That you, Miss Gill, please? Yes, Bertie. Leroy, come home? No, sir. Wonder where he is. Guess he's still down there, standing on that cold corner. Well, no, he isn't, Bertie. I was just down there. He was gone. Gone? Poor little fella probably got pneumonia and they carried him away. Now, Bertie. Stay out there that cold corner. Oh, my goodness. Hope nothing has happened to Leroy. I wonder if... Hi, Unc. Leroy, you all right, my boy? Sure. You didn't catch cold or anything? Catch cold? Of course not. I was in a nice warm movie all afternoon. What? <laughs> you were? Sure. You know, selling papers is a cent, Junk. It is? Sure. It got kind of cold, so I just left a tin can for people to put their money in. And I went to a movie. Pretty slick, huh? Yeah. I sold a lot of papers. And what do you think, Unc? I found a $5 bill in the tin can. Oh, really? The policeman said some fat guy put it there. <laughs> Wasn't that nice of him? Oh, yeah. Oh, boy, wait till I tell Bertie. Yeah. Wonder if I ought to take that $5 back. <laughs> nah. Let him keep it. What the heck? <laughs> Here they are, winners in the final week of Parquet's $50,000 contest. Four more entrants who won 1949 Ford sedans. Mrs. Robert Bowers of East Aurora, New York. Mrs. Harry Rogers of Miami, Arizona. Mrs. J.C. Walker of Birmingham, Alabama. Mrs. D.M. Greenland of San Francisco, California. Congratulations to all of you. Yes, indeed. And to the 140 other winners. By next week, we'll be able to announce the name actually chosen for the Gildersleeve baby. And we'll also be able to tell you who submitted that name and won the grand prize. Be sure to listen next week. Ladies and gentlemen, all of us are interested in planning for the future. There's that home we want to buy someday, or that trip we want to take, or that college education for our children. Well, the way to make those plans come true is to start saving now. And one of the best ways to save is to buy United States savings bonds regularly. Savings bonds are safe, they're profitable, and for every $3 invested, you get back 4 And they're convenient to buy. Use the payroll savings plan where you work or the bond a month plan where you bank. Pave the way to your future with United States savings bonds. Thank you and good night. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. The show was written by Gene Stone and Jack Robinson with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Wall saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Do that. Say, do you like mellow-aged, natural American cheese? You know, the kind that comes in the big golden wheels? If so, then you'll be happy to hear that now, at long last, Kraft has plenty of this taste-tempting, old-fashioned cheese. For the past several years, people have been wanting so much cheese that it's been difficult to set aside enough for aging. But now, Kraft can supply your dealer with all he needs. So ask him for aged, natural American, the Kraft kind, the next time you shop. Take home a big wedge cut from a golden wheel. The whole family will enjoy the mellow goodness of natural American cheese that has been so carefully aged by the master cheesemakers of Kraft. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.